on a vacation with my best friend. And we are going to my uncle's ranch. And they have horses and they have a dog and they have like a swimming pond. It is gonna be so much fun. Well, I'm gonna need to pack my trusty old suitcase here. I wonder what I should take for a visit to the ranch. First off, I know I am going to need a cowboy hat. And then we're gonna go horseback riding, so for sure we are going to need horse riding boots, my trusty old cowboy boots. Now I can't forget PJs, my favorite onesie. So we're gonna keep those in there cause they're gonna keep me warm. And then for sleeping, my favorite teddy bear. I wonder where I'm gonna sleep. I'm sure they're gonna have beds for this. Although, we might sleep under the stars. That would be so much fun. Campfire and s'mores. Oh yeah, my Bible. That's so important, I need that. You know, I have been reading about this guy. Oops, I almost gave it away. I almost told you who our Bible hero is for today. Well, you're just gonna have to wait there, partner. Why don't you just go rustle up some folks in your house and let's worship Jesus together. See y'all later.
With all my mind and strength Will you show me God To love like you love me So all the world will see With all my heart and soul With all my mind and strength Will you show me God To love like you love me So all the world will see The highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me in Oh his love for me Oh his love for me Who the sun sets free Oh is free indeed I'm a child of Yes, I am Free at last He has ransomed me His grace runs me While I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me Yes, He died for me Who the Son sets free Jesus. I want to worship him and I want to follow him my whole life. It's so cool. I have a relationship with Jesus like best friends. Our Bible hero today was best friends with God. He was called a friend of God. 
He was also the father to a whole nation. But the biggest thing about our Bible hero was that he was known for his faith. His name was Abram, and God changed it to Abraham, which means father of a multitude. Whoa! So this new name described God's plan and promise for his life. Abraham was God's friend. Isn't that a marvelous thing to say about someone? To be his friend means to be in a relationship with God, to just love spending time with him and listening to him, trusting him, just like we do with our friends. But kids, there is one difference with being God's friend compared to our friends. With your friends, you should always take turn choosing what you will play, right? But being friends with God, we should always let God choose what we will do because He always knows what's best. God wants to speak to us. Oh, that's so awesome, right? He wants to tell us His special plans for our life just like He did with Abraham. One day when Abraham was 75 years old, God spoke to him. Abraham heard God's voice. That's so amazing. God loves to speak to his children. Now, I wonder what God did tell Abraham. Oh, hey there. Can I tell you something? It is so great to be a friend of God. Trust me, there is no one as awesome as he is. I love spending time with him in prayer and just stopping at a beautiful place like this, sitting down and talking to God. One time, God spoke to me some incredible words. I listened carefully and those words spoke right to my heart. God said to me, Leave your country, your people, your relatives. Go to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. All the people on earth will be blessed through you. How cool! Those are words of many, many blessings from God. But did you notice it began with words that were a command? Words that required obedience. Abraham was to leave his country, to obey, to follow God's beautiful plan for his life. And his obedience would be rewarded with many blessings for him and for all the people of the world. With his obedience, God promised to make him a great nation and to bring him to a special land called the Promised Land. The great nation! The Israelites would come from his kids, his grandkids, his great-grandkids, his great-great-grandkids, and so on. But guess what? Abraham and his wife Sarah, they were already old and they did not even have one child. They needed a miracle. Well, God's word was a promise. This miracle would happen. God said the descendants from his kids would be like the sand on a beach or the stars in the sky. Too many to be counted. Whoa, and listen to this, it's so great. Through his descendants, Jesus would be born. This is how the world will be blessed through Abraham's obedience. How did Abraham react to God's word? The Bible says Abraham immediately obeyed God's command. He packed up his stuff and left. Abraham had faith in God. His faith came from hearing God's word spoken to him. Romans 10 verse 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Because Abraham had a relationship with God, he was a friend of God. He knew his God. He knew God is good and loves him. He knew God is powerful and can do anything. 
He knew God is faithful and keeps His promises all the time. He knew God's plan for his life are the best plans for him and for others too. He believed God's word. This explains why he trusted, why he had faith in God to lead his life. He left his own country without even knowing where he was going. Trusting God to lead him? Hmm... That is faith. Imagine a journey that you don't know where you're going. No maps, no GPS. You have no clue where the promised land is. How long will it take to get there? Would you see this as an adventure or would it just be scary to you? I think I would be a little nervous, but at the same time, very happy to obey God. We don't know how Abraham felt, but we know he obeyed and we know he had faith in God. He trusted God to lead him on this journey. So he began this hard journey of traveling by foot, living in tents along the way. Hebrews 11 verse 8 says, It was faith that made Abraham obey when God called him to go out to a country which God had promised to give him. Hearing God's word made faith grow in his heart. Faith made him want to obey God. Now, I have an object lesson! And this is going to help to explain faith in God. So, as you can see, I have a can here, right? So, when I read the words on this label, it tells me exactly what's inside this can. So, it says, peach slices. So, because of these words, I believe that there are peaches in this can, right? There's not apples or raspberries, nope, peaches. There's, there's even a picture of peaches on here. So I trust these words on the label are the truth, even if my eyes can't see, can't see the real peaches yet. Well, this is like faith, believing God's word, what he says is true. It's obeying him even if we don't see where it will lead us in life. Oh, this is the kind of faith that Abraham had and, and that I want. He didn't see the promised land just yet and he didn't have kids yet, but he believed God's word. God's word brought faith in his heart. 2 Corinthians 5 or 7 says, For if we live by faith and not by sight, because of his faith in God, his obedience, Abraham got to enjoy God's sweet blessings for him, the promised land, and all and all those descendants. Oh, wow. So, and you know what's inside this can, right? Well, let's see. Wow, can't get them on. <gasps> it's true. They're peaches, just like we said there would be. Ha, huh, let's see how they taste. Mmm, mmm. Wow, these, these are yummy. Faith in God, Oh, it is good for us. It is so, so sweet. When God speaks to me and asks me to do something, I obey. I've been a friend of God for so long already, and I know his plans are the best for me and the people around me. I trust God. He is faithful to lead me. I'm leaving my home and beginning this new journey with my living God as my guide. He has supplied me with great wealth, silver and gold, to care for my whole crew. For me, my wife Sarah, my nephew Lot, all of my servants and all of my animals. I praise God for his loving kindness. So they walked 
and walked and walked some more, many kilometers. Whew. They camped in many different places. One time they set up camp beside an oak tree at a place called Mora. There God appeared to Abraham and said, this land I will give to you, all of your descendants. Abraham built an altar there and he worshiped God. He did this often along the way as God faithfully led him. It took remarkable faith to go on a trip like that. And it surely wasn't a vacation trip like mine will be at the ranch, but it was so rewarding. Abraham got to see God's provision. God increased his flocks and his herds of animals. He became richer with silver and gold. God greatly blessed us so much that the land I shared with my nephew Lot, it wasn't big enough anymore for all of us. So I told Lot, you choose first, the land you want, and I'll go the other way. He chose the Jordan Valley in the east. It had lots of water for his animals and fertile land. It was like a paradise garden. I was so happy for him. I went west the opposite way to the land of Canaan. And then God came and spoke to me again. Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west. All the land that you see, I will give to you and your descendants forever. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. I will give you so many descendants that, like the dust of the earth, they cannot be counted. This was such a special moment. It had already been many years of traveling, and God showed me the vast land that he would give to me and my descendants the promised land. I could finally see it with my eyes. God also reaffirmed his promises to me to make me a dad one day and to have many descendants. It's many years of waiting. Sometimes this long wait is difficult, but today God reminded me he had not forgotten his promises to me. I built another altar and I worshiped God. Waiting and waiting and waiting ah, for something you really want can be hard. I can't wait to go on my vacation at my uncle's ranch. I just have a few weeks to wait. Abraham's wait was much longer. He was 75 years old when God told him for the first time that he would be a dad and have many descendants from that child. Well, 24 years later, he was still waiting. He needed faith during this waiting time to keep on believing God's word, his promises to him. Now, at the age of 99, Abraham had another special encounter. Was his waiting time over? Not yet, but God came and spoke to me again. I was so in awe of his powerful presence. I fell to the ground with my face down. And God reminded me one more time of his promises to me. But this time, he also asked me to make him a promise, to promise to obey him and do what's right. His promise to me and my promise to him was an agreement, an alliance with God. I said a big yes to God. Shortly after this alliance, this exchange of promises, Abraham had a special visit. He was sitting near his tent and three men came towards him. He jumped up and he ran to meet them. Yeah, I ran. Even at my age, I knew this was a visit from God. So I bowed my face to the ground. I asked them to stay and eat with us. I was so excited. I ran here, I ran there, asking my wife Sarah to bake some bread and my servants to prepare the best calf for a meal. When it was ready, we ate together 
at the entrance of the tent. And Sarah was listening to our conversations. Then, oh, what a surprise to my ears and to Sarah's ears. One of the men from God said he would return in about a year and my wife Sarah and I would have a son. When I heard what the Lord said, I laughed <laughs> and, and whispered to myself, Abraham and I are way too old to have a baby, but way too old. God heard her laugh of disbelief and said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Is anything too hard for me? Kids, nothing is too hard for our God. He can do things that are impossible. And sure enough, as promised, God performed a miracle and Sarah became pregnant. When Abraham was a hundred years and Sarah about 90, their son was born. God is so faithful to keep his promises. Oh my, God has made me laugh. Everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. No one thought Abraham and I could have a child because we're both so old. But, but we did. God did a miracle. He kept his promise to my husband Abraham. I'm so happy. I'm so blessed. After all these years, I get my turn to be a mom. We named our son Isaac. His name means laughter. God is so good. Having faith in our faithful God is so rewarding. He fulfilled his promise to us to give us a son. It was worth waiting, even if it wasn't always easy. And I know God will fulfill the rest of his promises to me. I believe and I have faith that through my son Isaac, and grandkids to come, I will have many descendants, as many as the stars, too many to count. Abraham was quite a hero of faith because he had a relationship with God. His friendship with God made him trust and obey God. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6, without faith, no one can please God. God wants you and me to live by faith too. To please Him, to love Him. He desires this for us because He loves us. God helps us to have faith in Him. God gave us some evidence that shows, that speaks, that He is real, that He is God. God speaks to us that He is real through what He created. His creation shows His mighty power. The stars, the mountains, the beauty and flowers, diversity of animals, and how He made us. We can see everything He made. God speaks to us through our conscience. God made us with a conscience. It's like a little voice inside of us that tells us what is right and what is wrong and to help us to choose what is right. God speaks to us through history. We can see God's faithfulness throughout history, His divine intervention. God speaks to us through His Word, the Bible. We can learn all about who God is and what He has done for us. God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings conviction in our heart that we need God in our life and that Jesus is our Savior. He helps us walk in faith. I love how God speaks to us so many different ways to create faith in our heart, to believe in Him, to trust Him. Our journey of faith in God begins with an action of trust giving our life to Jesus by asking Jesus to forgive our sins, to have a relationship, a beautiful friendship with Him. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. It is the gift of God. So, so have you received this gift to give your life to Jesus? If not, why not choose Him today? He made you and He loves you with the biggest love ever. 
So how about we do that together right now? Just say it with me. Jesus, I give you my life, my heart. Forgive my sins, all of those unkind things that I've done. I want to trust you. I want to follow you by obeying your good plans for my life. Amen. This is the beginning of your journey of faith in God. Now, as a Christian, we need to put effort to grow our faith so it will get really big. Well, one special way this happens is by spending time with Jesus in prayer, being His friend, talking with Him and praising Him, oh, and also letting Him speak to us by being quiet, listening, right? Jesus just loves whispering special words in our heart. And sometimes we even get to sense His presence, His love in a special way. Kids, our time with Jesus will make our faith grow because prayer brings us to trust and obey Him more. So let's spend lots of time with Jesus every day. Our faith in God will also grow by reading the Bible, God's Word. God speaks to us this way. His Word encourages us and teaches us. And we read how good God is and how powerful He is. It teaches us how to obey Him and it makes my faith grow. So let's read the Bible often. God rewarded Abraham's faith in Him. God blessed him. And God will reward our faith too our obedience. His blessing will be upon us and one day we will get the greatest reward of our faith in Him. He will bring us to live in heaven, the most beautiful place, the best place ever. Well kids, let's take some time to pray together, to thank God, to ask Him for faith in our lives. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness, for your love for us. Thank you for speaking to us in so many different ways to help us to have faith in you. Ah, oh, God, to help us to trust you more. You are so good. Ah, oh, Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, help me to grow in my faith to help me to obey God's Word. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you for what you have done on the cross for us. And I love that I can be your friend to spend time with you. Amen. Let's finish with an experiment about trust. So, first I will pour some water into this glass. Now I will put this card on top here. Okay, so now it's time to place this glass of water on top of my head. Can I trust that the water won't spill all over me? <laughs> well, that's easy to trust. The water can't spill on me this way. But what if I turn it upside down over my head? This makes me think of faith trusting God. It's obeying Him and doing things He wants me to do, not knowing what will happen. But when we trust God, He's got this. Everything will be fine. He's got my back. Okay, here goes. Oh, I'm a little nervous. Oh, I'm safe. No spills. This is so cool. God is so cool. I can totally trust Him with my life and have faith in Him. Yeehaw! I'm finally here. My wait is over. It's vacation time at my uncle's ranch, y'all. Keep up the faith in God and let Him lead you in faith, youngins.